welcome aboard, man. This is uh, one of the very first episodes I'm doing of the All Equity podcast. And just, just to keep it real, this is not like a scripted thing. This is just us having a regular conversation. Let's do it. Uh, it's black men talking yeah. about life, what's going on with business, family, whatever we want to talk about, man. So why don't you just tell the people kind of a little bit about you, your business, and uh, where you're at right now in your journey. Good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, a little bit about myself. Um, first of all, my name is Josh Hunt. Um, shout out, shout out to Venture X, shout out to Sync Lab Media, um, where I'm recording this. Um, but yeah, a little bit about myself. I'm the founder of Bolt. Um, Bolt, it is a company that bridges the gap between culture and corporate. Um, and the way we do that is through workshops, um, activations, which is experimental marketing and consulting. Um, and we just focus on cultural topics um, and relative topics like diversity. And, and that's, you know, how we met. And I'm super excited to, you know, chat with you. We chat for about like an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And it didn't even feel like that whenever we were talking. <laughs> for real, it didn't, yeah. Right there, we were able to, you know, create that synergy and we were able to relate to each other too as well. Um, and we have a lot of similar experiences. And, and, you know, one of the similar experiences we've had growing up um, and just being in this industry, which is corporate, um, is just, you know, that, that red tape and not feeling like you can be your true self. Um, you know, I, like I said, I got a dangling cross earring. You know, I don't feel like, you know, <laughs> I could have been myself, you know, a couple of years ago in, in corporate. Right. And see, these things are, you know, kind of, you know, you know, taking it, taking its form and they're allowing creatives in that space. But I, I want to be a part of that change and create a, a, a safe place for, you know, different people to, you know, interact and you know be a part of that cognitive diversity that we talked about um and a part of that change man that was, that was a solid intro yeah. <laughs> was, you That's, know i think the coolest thing about about josh is just this level of transparency and awareness so like one of the things we were talking about is when you're in that corporate space and you're code switching right there's a certain level of we're not showing them who we really are. Right, exactly. Right, right. That's really what it is. People don't want to admit it. They don't right. want to be honest about it. It's like, oh, well, now it's, I'm being corporate or whatever. No, you're being white. <laughs> we, chose, we chose to be that way to get where we wanted. And right. we didn't tell people that we weren't being our real self. And that's just real. Like, you know, that's I don't talk to any of those coworkers. Yeah. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I have a uh, yeah, I have a gentleman who's actually uh, whose whole studio this is. He worked at for uh, several years, so yeah. that's a little bit of insight of like how it is to, to work there as well. So I mean, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep the names out of it, but you know, yeah, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. certain things doesn't matter where it is, whether you know if it's Google, or Facebook, whatever. Right. As as awesome as that job title is, it doesn't carry weight like your character facts agree and the story right like your character josh by itself is one of the most powerful things someone in that position can do is hire someone like you right why do you think you that they're, why do you think that they shy away from doing that i think i think it's like when you're a leader that fear of getting called out that first time. Mm. If someone's on your team that's, you know, black or brown says, I don't like this, or this makes me feel uncomfortable. It feels like this, right? It feels like, ooh. Cool, right. Mm -hmm. Instead of it feeling just like a chin check, mm -hmm. right? If you're a good leader, that should just be a chin check. It's not a, it's not a complete attack on your entire being as a, as a human. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make mistakes. You're gonna make mistakes. Someone's gonna say, "Oh, you got this wrong," or um, "You weren't inclusive in this scenario." And you and I are gonna go, "Oh, yeah, that's my bad. That's my bad. Let me do better next time." Exactly. But that's not how other people operate. Right. Right. Why do you think that is? Mm. Well, I just I just think people feel safe with you know, when like you similar something similar to what you said, it's just like it makes it's yeah. more comfortable. Like I'm I'm more comfortable 
just being transparent, I'm more comfortable around the people that look like me, me as well. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I would probably, I wouldn't, if I was in that position, which I, I have, which I am, um, I hire a, you know, a, a, a cognitive diverse team because yeah. I know from the experiences that I've had, um, these experiences is what got me here. So it's being in different places and different meeting different people um, and being around different people actually expanded my my Verizon or Horizon, I should say. Um, yeah. And, and, and the way I view life um, and the way I work and it's actually sharpened my skills. Um, and like you said, like you're, you're somewhat um, scared to get chin checked when you, you know, meet someone with a different belief than you, you know, there was someone right. who disagreed with me politically um, right. and disagree with them. And you know what, <laughs> I got coffee with them because mm. both everything about their perspective and they wanted to know mine. And we actually became good friends after that. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's it's one of those things where you can't be afraid to learn and then see new views um, and have the new views because they actually sharpen the ones that you have. So I, I just think it just boils down to being comfortable with the people that you're with um, and the, the people mm -hmm. that you've grown up with. Um, so if that's in the corporate space, if you you know you're in the C suite, you're more than likely you know at the at the country clubs and mm -hmm. at the, the sky lounges and things like that. And these are the people that you're comfortable with. Um, and that's understandable. However, I will say that, you know, branching out will actually, in, you know, increase that engagement and that brand as well, too, as well, that you're, that you're working with. So once, which is what I think, you know, is happening now where, where brands are starting to see um, what they have been doing in some of these corporations that have been appropriating the culture, appropriating, you know, uh, talent, um, are starting to give those people uh, recognition and let those people in um so and i'll just that's you know that's why we're here and you know that's what you do as well and yeah. i you know i respect that a hundred percent and support it a hundred percent so yeah that's love, man i think there were so many thoughts going through my head when you were saying that just one of the first things was tom right the, the tom the the gerald yeah. or whatever you want you know the typical right. white dude is in the C-suite, right? Who's chilling at the at the yacht club or whatever? Mm -hmm. And then you know, people always say, "Well, reverse racism. You're only hiring black people, or you're only, right? You're only comfortable, you know, you're only comfortable around black and brown people. You don't want white people on your team or whatever." Yeah. How do you how do you feel about when people say that? Mm, that's a great question. Um, because the the first person I actually hired was white. Um, the first person I ever worked with was white. However, uh, I, I I don't believe there is a such thing as reverse racism. Um, and I don't really get too deep deep into it. Um, I'm not like an expert on racism and, and things like that. Because uh, I, I, I shifted my mind to not even, you know, be the victim in certain situations. Mm. Um, but so that it's, I have a positive outlook on that. And I just be like, you know, I'm going to use this to my advantage. Um, however, to yeah. answer question i think that um i think that yeah it, it, there's no such thing as reverse racism because it's like a, a privilege and you know having you know having a team that isn't diverse whether that's all black or you know all white isn't a if it isn't mm. a distance and maybe not all white because that you know that there may be some privilege there. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah like i i really wonder if um the people that say that, that say that it is reverse racism, say, you know, say there's one white person on my team. Right. And everybody else is black and brown. Right. Is that a, is that an inclusive workplace or is that a, uh, would a white person feel like that's like a negative? Like that, that's such an interesting concept to me. Like I, I understand it just from a one plus one equals two, like right. that level of thinking. Right. But when you dig deeper, for sure, I, I definitely would agree with you that it'd be really hard to make a case that right. 400 yeah. years. Right. But in the end, you know, I, don't know. I was about to say, in corporate, I, I feel like, um, you know, that's that's not the norm. So right. for, you know, if, let's say someone who was white um, joined a team like that for, for a year or two there's nothing wrong with that that's that's 
you'll probably be much more within that that aspect to take back to another corporation or another another organization because of all the the way that everyone thought and how everyone thought differently from you. I'd rather actually work around people that don't look like me, whether they're you know like I said, white, brown, um, right. Any any Asian, it doesn't matter. I I rather work with someone who doesn't look like me. Um, I would say I'd rather work with me. Take that back. I I, I enjoy working with people who gotcha. You. There's not really a preference. It's just what you've been accustomed to. Exactly. Exactly. Got it. So, yeah, that, I'd agree with you because definitely when I was in tech, I think. Um, wow. This is yeah. This this is gonna take some thought. I think my most comfortable days were honestly not when I was not surrounded by only white people. Mm, right. Facts. Like because I'm, it's just too it's it's too because then they start feeling uncomfortable and they start putting your, their microaggressions on you and that's not a place you want to be in. Right. It's not. It's not. It's and not. I, I did a poll um not too long ago. It was, it was right after the George Floyd uh, incident and some people were still going back to their workspaces um, or mm. you know, people were still working out, just going out um, the limited times I did go out you know obviously I was safe wore a mask and everything however I still felt that microaggression like you mentioned from mm. people and I'm a really deep person and I just know energy doesn't lie so if I'm it does not they're looking at me, I can feel them looking at me like you're you're part of the riots or you're part of, you know what I'm saying? Like Exactly. It's like, I bet you don't want to be here. And like, they're judging you. Where, even if they're judging you in a positive way. Right. It's the they're limit. putting their energy onto you, their guilt, their feelings, their whatever onto you. Exactly. And you can feel that. And that takes a toll. And a lot of people don't know that. Um, yeah. That, that actually does affect us. Um, and exactly. Affects, yeah. Exactly. And that, you know, if that affects me personally, that obviously can carry over into my work, um, into my, my work life balance, my family, um, like the friends that I talk to, these things can, you know, begin to seep in and, you know, you may start losing confidence in yourself and things like that. And it's just like one of those yeah. things, where it's, it can all be avoided if the problem was, you know, brought to light, which is what it's being brought now. And that's why I'm loving this movement. I'm loving what's going on. Um, I wouldn't say it's the it's you know it's it's better late than never uh, mm -hmm. uh yep. but you know it's it's one it's something that we i've been pushing for the last year and a half and you know I, I stand behind you know wanting to create that safe place for creatives and just cultural cognitive diversity and you mm -hmm. know the, the 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 i guess the simpler we're able to explain exactly what it is you know the the easier people understand it and then right. what to move forward and when you say cognitive diversity i think people need a breakdown of that because the way you explain it to me is really good can you break that down yeah yeah so when i when i say cognitive diversity um that just means you know obviously you cognitive i wouldn't say obviously but it's cognitive is like it, it has to do with the way you think it has to do with mm. uh, uh what goes on in your mind um and having different people who think differently um is is very very advantageous and the way that these people think differently they come from different backgrounds and different cultures and different experiences and those are all boiled into what you know is you know the, their perspective if you will um yeah. having different perspectives around you and if i have four different perspectives i was listening to, actually i was listening to a podcast yesterday by ed milet and it was on diversity and he was just saying like, and I was just like, wow, I would have never thought I heard a, a, a diversity uh, uh, a podcast by Ed Milet. And he was just talking about how his team is so diverse. And it just made me think about like, yep, there it is, cognitive diversity. Like, that is what makes a very strong team. That's what makes a strong mm -hmm. business. Um, no matter, you know, you can name you can name a company and I'll, I'll point out why they're so great. And it's going to be because they're, they have different people that think differently. Um, mm -hmm. They may not have gotten that attention, um, or, or that, uh, uh, what do you call it? That, that diversity stamp. Yeah, that diversity stamp. But you right. know, there's that they're, they only have someone in that's thinking differently from them. Um, and it helps them, you know, reach new heights and you're be able to bring in, you know, influencers that are authentic with your brand 
you know, that's cognitive diversity right there. They don't think the same as a, as a, as a corporate, you know, structure, but it helps your brain, you know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that's like uh-huh. really hard for me sometimes is, is, um, you'll see online, right. When people, the diversity, it, the entire concept, it's so intellectualized. Right to the point where people are like afraid to just jump in right it's like what am i saying the right thing yeah have you have you ever felt that way or how what would you say to people that do feel that way but what's the question again i'm sorry so people that feel like well i'm not a diversity expert i don't want to jump in on this right Um, okay right how how do those people get involved yeah, and I think that the the people who aren't diversity experts, they need to hire people like me and you because we understand, you know, diversity and inclusion. And I, am I answering your question the right way? Um, yep. Okay, sweet. Well, yeah. So I, I'm I'm definitely I definitely think that there are experts within that space. Those are people who have who are multifaceted, who can, you know, I wouldn't say shape shift, but someone who can relate to different cultures and mm. they're able to be more relatable. That's just the facts. That's, uh, that so you think like a, a an expert is just innately more relatable, which makes them able to hear and understand and mediate different different cultures within a workspace. I I hundred percent agree, and mm-hmm. well, like you and, and myself, I I believe that we were born um, as for such a time as this, um, mm-hmm. and everyone I believe that everyone is created to solve a problem on this earth. And I feel like I was created and I didn't know this until, you know, I started personal development and all that stuff. And then I was able to see my purpose. It was like, wait, so I've been, you know, I love business. I love, I love, you know, I love corporations. I love how it works. I just love how business works. I love the way people think. I love humans. And I put the two together and this is, this is where I am. You know what I mean? So it, it takes, a special type of person, I believe, um, to be able to relate and, and pull both sides together to where they're able to relate um, each other side to each other. And then I feel like that's, you know, when you're able to grow and move forward. So it, like I said, it's, it's, it's something that a company can try to do on their own. Um, yeah. But the way corporations are set up and the way business has been ran for years, um, it's it's pretty scripted and it, it's pretty structured and the true change and true true inclusion happens authentically and if you're not able to create that true authentic experience it's it's not going to change so you, you need someone who can come in there and be like hey i've been doing this i know how to create this experience for you and that's what increases that engagement too with your employees and you know your teams and all of that it it, it boils down to like i said just um uh, being being an expert in that space or having someone who can relate to both sides. Mm. Yeah. Do you think as a younger person, especially in these times right now, when you see online how people are reacting to the pandemic right. and the way that, you know, the corporate, the landscapes are shifting so much within different systems, you know, right. whether it's, corporation small business like so many businesses are going broke and that's like such a scary thing but like when you look at it from your perspective being so young right do do you think this is like a one-time thing that's happening or is this was something that that can happen again and we all need to be like prepared like was this like a wake-up call for us or like what is how are you internalizing this whole experience that's a great question um i just think that Personally, because this is something that I've always thought, I wouldn't say always thought, but over definitely over the last two years, um, I, I knew that in order for brands to continue to relate or be relatable to people, humans, um, they would need to start looking like us. And uh, I know a statistic I shared with you last time uh, we talked was millennials, you know, is the most diverse generation there is right 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 you were talking about the national geographic cover national geographic cover exactly right a few years like years ago they had 
uh, a young lady on there with the hazel eyes mm -hmm. and bright, um, obviously mixed, um, very culturally looking. Right. And this is something that isn't going to change. It's not going anywhere. It's only getting more diverse. So I, I knew that in order for some of these brands and corporations to you know, continue to, to grow um, and mm. reach the audience they want to reach, that they were going to need to either start becoming and, and morphing to look like the people or hire someone who does look like the people to bring the two together because it's, mm. not, it's not going to, to work um, without that, um, especially as more, um, uh, as more diversity is even happening with the generation under us. So, you know, I think it's, I think we're at the tip of the iceberg right now where, you know, things are going to change dramatically. Um, but it's going to change dramatically for the better. Um, and I'm not, yeah. you know, we're not looking to come in here and just take everyone's jobs or we want <laughs> to be changed and we just, no, we don't want no structure. Like that's right, right, right. how we think. Um, where, where we love structure, where we're not animals. <laughs> we, we want to, you know, <laughs> we want, we want to, to, to be successful. And when you're able to make that person within your organization feel valued, um, they not only, you know, feel like they have a purpose, but then that purpose turns into better work, better right. results. You increase your bottom line, better retainment, mm -hmm. all that comes mm -hmm. with that. So, yeah. And so what, what makes you feel valued and how can we help people feel more valued? Man, what makes me feel valued? That's a great question. What makes me feel valued? Um, I would say the first thing, man, honestly, pay that <laughs> pay what I'm worried. Like you wouldn't argue with, yeah. you know, someone who, who maybe didn't necessarily look like me, who had the same type of background, type experience, of, type value, of bringing and yeah, exactly. Like pay that person with their work. Like that's, that's, that's one way to 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 to, to, um, to to bring value or you know just to feel valued as if I'm being paid what I'm worth um, and what I'm bringing to the table. Um, another way I would say would be to um, I guess just acknowledge acknowledgement is 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 mm. huge. Um, publicly or privately? Publicly, privately, all of it. Um, and and just a quick tip if this is you know going out. Yeah. I, is important for all millennials and all generations Z. this is something that you should be doing constantly you should constantly be being transparent and that's something i loved about all approach like the way that you guys um your whole process and what you do and you show your team and your pro your journey like i'm going to definitely be tuning in to 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 follow because it's it's that transparency and mm. that that transparency is what i guess uh uh separates you from others but back on, on to back on point um being valued um right. i see that you value you know your the people that you work with in your team um and that's important that's you know and it looks like you do it continually i can just tell yeah you can create a whole group so it looks like you know people are being valued continually and that right. makes you part of something like you know i just i got a, a part of you know i uh, accepted the, the the request you sent for the diversity um inclusion group on on mm -hmm. LinkedIn. And, you know, that makes me feel good. I feel valued. I'm like, oh, wait, someone noticed that that's what industry, you know, I'm, I'm in. And then you put me in that organization. That's another form of value right there. Um, sharing information, that's value, you know? Like, and I, I think that it's, it's, it, it's, it's sometimes kept away for some reason. I see. Yeah. I think the, there's, I think the reason is because, um, it's like the gotcha moment people don't want to get exposed for saying the wrong thing mm. and that that scares them more than even trying right i agree i agree right yeah. so like at the end of the day if someone let's say joe who's 75 is attempting to be more inclusive in his finance firm that his family has owned for 200 years right right and he goes online He's going to look at, um, if he's in that kind of thinking, he right. may look as look at diversity as a risk, mm -hmm. which is absolutely wrong. Right. Right. If there's nothing, there's nothing risky about yeah. not being white. <laughs> that's, but that's the way they think right. some of these people. Yeah. Right. 
I agree. It's a uh, it's a uh, an interesting time, and it's it's an interesting topic. Uh, I actually haven't had a conversation like this, and like I said, I was I was definitely down to do this with you because we do you know have similar beliefs, um, and like I said, the experience was there um, in terms of like you know your your near death experiences bring your near death experience brought you to you know this whole new mm. this whole new, uh excuse me <clears throat> little burp sorry. Um, yeah. this, this new experience or that, that near death experience brought you a whole new perspective and right. you know, not a lot of people can say that they've done that um, or have had that happen to them so you, you got to just look at it from an experience um, experience standpoint like hey I'm not taking a risk by hiring this guy who's out of the hood you know that's, that's where I'm from I grew up you know mm -hmm. I said five four brothers one sister um, what, uh, what city uh, originally from California, I lived, uh, currently live in Dallas, Texas, um, and we moved to Dallas. Um, so, you know, staying in a two bedroom, two bedroom apartment, you know, with four, mm. beds, with you wow. know, bunk bed, two bunk beds, it was just, it was different, you know, but right. that, that experience for me created a willpower, you know, that might not a lot of people may have. Um, it, it created definitely endurance, um, the ability to, you know, streets thing that's a thing believe it or not <laughs> um, we, we take that to, to business um it definitely created uh, a sense of responsibility too that you know not a lot of people may have that at a at an early age where you're, you're you got to be the one that goes stand in the line to get groceries at the salvation army these are just things mm. that you know i i did growing up growing up that was that was key what you just said that was, i want people to skip over that yeah, well, being a, being a kid standing in line at Salvation Army. Talk about that for a second. What was that like? Oh, what was it like? It's, it was different. It was it was it was. But how do you know it's different? You see I, what I'm saying? It's different. So actually, the Salvation Army at the time, uh, they they granted me a scholarship to go to a private school, um, mm. which was Tyler, and I went there and I saw. I had friends, Jason and Trevor, oh. and their house and. <laughs> I was just like completely different from my house. You know, <laughs> like, oh snap, that's super cool. You have a pool in your backyard? Like what? I only right. thought that those were like you know, at the at the YMCA or something. You know what I mean? So getting to see getting to see that, um, and you know, then going back to, to my home and having, like I said, stand in the line, you know, to get groceries, it's it was completely different. Um, and I just knew that I wanted better for myself. So that, that mm. caused me to naturally develop um, discipline and, and to approach life differently than most people because it's like this, I'm not in it, you know, for, for myself at that, at that point, you know, right. I'm in it for others and I'm doing it to, you know, for my family and things like that. So it's like, I have a lot more on the line um, than a lot of the other people. Um, right. And that, that just comes with, or I guess, what I'm trying to say is that, like, I approach situations differently because of that, um, mm -hmm. because of those experiences. Yeah, and, you feel and like the stakes are higher, probably too. Higher for, for sure. Like, I, I was not, I was not chilling during quarantine. Like a mm. lot of, you know, the stakes weren't that high. I'm constantly working because stakes are high for me. Um, mm. You know, stakes are, I'm, I'm sure, high for you. So it's just right. things where, you know, it's, it, it's that's why you include different people into, you know, that don't look like you into your team or, you know, you share information because you're able to, you know, get someone to look at it differently from you um, because of their, like I said, experiences and things that they've been through. But yeah, the, the standing line, was, it was never fun. It was, <laughs> wow. it was rough, um, but, you know, nonetheless, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful um, for those moments uh, because it just makes the, the, the leveling up that much better um it brings more fulfillment i feel like too as well mm. yeah yeah you touched on something the the it brings more fulfillment mm -hmm. i think a lot of people don't understand why why yeah and so when you're hiring a black employee who may be from a background like yours right in their mind sometimes it's like oh i made it to this big company i made it right, right. but deep down 
we want to educate people to already feel that way about themselves and not cool. need that validation mm -hmm. and let their character be that stamp of approval. Oh, yep. Yep. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah those things bought, built and taught me character all throughout, right. you know, struggling right. through high school, um, you know, even through college. I mean, I got, I was on a full ride to, to, to Wake Forest and, you mm. know, my mom, you know, would, do her best and send me like little goodie bags and i would see these kids down the hallway <laughs> in the door <laughs> where they got porsche on their keys and mercedes Benz, and their wow. boxes were a lot 10 times bigger than mine but you know like i said that just built you know endurance and i built a lot of character within myself to you know know that i have to keep going and like keep keep striving for better because i, I want better for you know myself and my family so but yeah, that's the the character is a huge a huge uh uh, uh thing that you brought up. Um, and that's yeah, very important for sure. Definitely. When uh when I was sixteen, man, I can remember. Yeah. The first time I really got exposed to um. You remember Amway? Amway. Yes. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I think they had like a little original Netflix. They were on one of those uh, Netflix originals. It's like a pyramid scheme or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I want to jump, jump the gun on one of those uh, Netflix originals about like fraud companies or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, I swear, man, so I was working at um, Guitar Center. Yeah. And I was like 18. And this dude walked in, our age, young dude, he was like 23, 4 maybe. And he just, I could tell the minute he walked in, he was not really a customer. Right. It's so weird how you pick up on that immediately. I'm on the sales floor and I just could tell something was, something was different about this dude. Yeah. Come to find out his parents pretty much own Amway. Oh, wow. So this kid worth like $50 million. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He walks up to me, he goes, hey man, I'm thinking about getting some equipment because I'm trying to, so I don't remember, he's trying to like play around, right? He, he, he's, you know, luxury shopping, right? And I'm in the DJ right. department, fun. The fun shopping, right? Turntables, all that, and the pro audio gear and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I, I want to make sure you get the commission though and everything and all this stuff. And so I see now the wheels turning and I was like, what's this dude trying to do? Right, right. And then he and then he starts talking about this opportunity. Mm. And because I wanted better for my life mm. and I, I could sense something was different, I listened to his little pitch about Amway and then he invited me to the, their little meetings. Right, right. <laughs> Bro, this is some cult shit. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, you know, I walked in there and pyramid scheme, <laughs> coal, whatever, and all these people selling uh, health goods or whatever it was. Right. And then I kept in touch because I wanted to keep the network because I know how powerful this dude is. And also I felt like we were becoming real friends because he went to my house, we met my mom, all these things. Yeah. come to find out really he's just trying to groom me to become uh one of the people affiliate marketers or whatever right mm -hmm. but he goes so far this is what's crazy why i bring this up he goes so far as to bring me to his penthouse in bellevue mm -hmm. basketball players next door mm -hmm. top floor we walk in the parking garage imagine this right choop, choop. Actually, hold on a second. No chirp chirp. <laughs> no chirp chirp. He yeah. just starts opening cars. Yeah. Open the Porsche. Right. Open the Ferrari. And I was like, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you just opening? We should just open all of them. We should just start opening all of them. It's like, why? These aren't your cars. And he's like, oh, yeah, we own these. So what? You just open like 10 cars. That's crazy. And that crazy dude, I'm just like a, I'm just like a kid, and he's just opening these cars. Didn't explain. 
oh, these are our cars, this is our lot life, this is our penthouse, none of that. He just starts opening them. And in that moment, I knew right there. Yeah. I knew I wasn't going to be him. You're right. Because what he was trying to do was get more diversity in his organization because he saw my talent. Right. And that was his way is by showing, flashing a bunch of cash, right? Mm-hmm. And, but I wanted, like you were saying, that authenticity. Right. I wanted to be valued as a friend, right? as someone talented, an entrepreneur. And right. that was the kind of relationship I thought he was offering me, mm. yeah. right? And so then, sure enough, when I told him I wasn't interested, he never talked to me again. Yeah. Never picked up the phone, nothing. Right. And to this day, I think about that. I think about that whole scenario and being right. in that Lambo and like all that crazy stuff. Because here's the other crazy part: it was like a whole day. So we were hopping in the cars, but then what he did is he said, uh, "There's this thing called a Stingray. It's like a high-powered go kart that goes 80 miles an hour." Oh, okay. And you can just drive it on the on the freeway. Yeah, yeah. We hopped in that. Everybody was like taking pictures of us, and then we were going 90 miles an hour on the freeway. Cop pulled us over, didn't even care. Wow, yeah. Cop, cop wrote a ticket, he didn't care. He was like, I'll pay it later, I don't care. And he just kept, he just hopped right back. We just hopped right back in, yeah. 100 miles down the 405, dude. I was like, This is privilege at its finest, bro. It happens. <laughs> right? So that I definitely, right then, I realized, like, okay, as an entrepreneur, that's not who I really want to be. Right. Is there a moment for you that you knew, here's my path as an entrepreneur and what I'm trying to do that's authentic, and here's not what I want to do. Do you have one of those moments in your life? Let me think about that. Give me a second. Yeah. <sighs> Let me see. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I do. So I was working, and I'm going to say the name. I was working at a gym, Kiesel. That is D I. No, I'm just <laughs> They're located at. No. <laughs> um, the owner. Um, and I, I was the owner. I, I, I admired him when I first. So I came into the gym. I was actually doing yoga across the street. It was a place, it was core, core power across the street. And I seen the gym next and I was like, oh, well, I didn't know there's a gym over here. So I was at a current, I was at that time, I was at a lifetime. And I was just like, yeah, you know, lifetime's getting kind of heavy on the pocketbooks, a little expensive. Um, and <laughs> time to, to switch gyms um, during this time. And he actually sold me on doing like a position there. Um, after I was trying to inquiring about the gym, and he was just like, yeah, well, what do you, what do you do now? You know, he was just like, hey, well, I could do part time here and work. Now, I like this dude so much because he sold me on his, you know, personality. Right. And, you know, how he was, like his Tesla he had parked out in the front. No one could park in that parking spot. Like, I was just like, yeah, this is a cool guy. It seems like, you know, I want to, I want to understand, you know, I want to understand him more. Um, because, you know, he said he started from the bottom and all this other stuff. Turns out he didn't start from the bottom. <laughs> He ain't Drake. <laughs> Highland Park, and I know you're from Seattle. Highland Park is one of the like richest areas in Dallas, and um, you know it was it 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 dawned on me that just like wow, like this this person who's not even kind to his employer employees, um, the people that's around him. Yeah, he's 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 really cool with the members and things like that. But the people that the actually and stuff. trainers him. Um, the trainers there, like they all did not like him like that. Um, he was, he just, he just wasn't um, who I inspired or was wanting to be um, and become. Um, so I ended up, you know, leaving the gym. And I was just like, you know what? I thought that this particular person was going to be, you know, somebody who I could just l- learn and glean from. I was already like, right. I was already, you know, on NASA, you know, getting my personal training license to have on the side you know a lot of a lot of the personal trainers there you know mm-hmm. they're in real estate they're in, they're one of them is in corp corporate um you know one of them like i said in corporate he's a c-suite and he's still a trainer uh, i think that's pretty cool because i want to i don't want to just you know do business i love 
the health side, and we can get into that some other time, but the health and wellness, health and fitness, mental health, all that for me too as well. Um, right. but, but yeah, so just, just watching how he, he moved, um, it, it definitely changed my, 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 my thought of how I should treat people that work mm -hmm. for me uh, or yeah. work with me. And, and that's just being a kind person, being a good person to them, um, having, you know, just being a stand-up guy and not always, you know, just in it for, for the money and not caring about people's actual problems. Um, so I sat down and told him that I had an issue with my brother. I had to fly to California and I, I get back. First off, he was just like, yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, didn't really ask any questions. I get back, he's just like, um, how's your brother? I was just in the middle of telling him how he was and he's just like, cuts me off. And wow. just me about something else. And I'm just like, I was talking about a very serious situation and you know, just his lack of awareness um, and relatability was mm -hmm. something that I was just like, you know what, that can't be me. I gotta, mm -hmm. I gotta be more relatable. I gotta mm -hmm. be fair and I gotta be kind to people. Um, and I think those three things is what I took away from it for sure. Yeah. And how do you feel like it's a good way to do that as an employer without coming across as like, you know, when you, everybody knows that guy who's like, what's up, brother? How you doing? Like that white guy who does that is trying to be relatable and cool, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of those type of people are going to see this. Yeah. What do you, what would you say to that person who's trying to be, who relatable. is a good dude? Yeah, who's, who's a good dude, but they always using the, yeah, hey, what's bro. up, brother? You know? I got you. Um, see, I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with that, um, but the way to be yeah. more relatable than that would be to just listen to you know mm. say hey I don't understand what you're going through or what you've been through um do you mind telling me you know let me hear it from your perspective and like I said there it goes back to sharing different perspectives mm -hmm. I would be like hey I don't understand what you where you've gone either or been sir so if you don't mind sharing your perspective with me right you're able to grow together um and that's where cognitive diversity comes in where you know you you you'll hear my perspective and you'll hear where I come from and then now you're able to relate better you're able mm -hmm. to have and I wouldn't even say an edge but essentially that's what it is it's like you have an edge on the conversation if I know where you're from and you know that's why people go to each other's LinkedIn profiles before you chat with them or talk to them exactly if you want to know about that person it's the same thing you just do with human connection you talk to them face to face and be like hey tell me about yourself I don't understand it so help me understand um, and that's, that's, you know, where authenticity comes and we were, what we were talking about earlier, it's just, that's what it boils down to being able to hear that person, is how you're able to relate. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the hearing, the hearing with the mind and the ears, Yeah. Mm -hmm. the thought process of the way you listen. Right. The way you listen. I, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've had to figure out with my clients too, is like, you may give an instruction or some advice that that if they executed it right it would change their life i've been able to see that like some of my clients they will execute what i say right and then three months later they don't have to work ever again in terms of like having an employer that they don't you know or as a, being an employee they're no longer an employee right. their, their business is popping right? right and then you see other people that when they when they their version of listening gets them to where they're at right so exactly. how are you able to tap in and, and hone that that listening so sharp so then you could execute man that's a that's a talent that i developed since i was mm. young um like i said that's that's something who i've always been to as well um personally i i have like i said i'm a deep person i have like an ability to discern um but a way that you can work on that skill would be to just surrounding yourself with different people and i'm going to stress this so many times because it's literally how I learned. Um, like I said, I grew up in the hood, had the advantage of going, you know, getting an, getting an education or education at a private school for a couple of years, um, you know, with, with the thanks to the Salvation Army who granted me a scholarship to go to those school. That right there took me from immediately being out of the hood to being in a, a, a private school with people that thought completely different from me, you know, like, you know, they, they, they didn't have to, you know, they didn't have to, to, and at that time too, when you're young, you're not, you're just being yourself. So it was yeah. easy to pick up on their authentic self 
um, and they weren't trying to sell me anything either. So that's another, <laughs> like someone who's not trying to sell you anything, they, they're going to be themselves and just be, you know, um, who they are and picking up on their, you know, behavioral differences, um, the way they talk, the way they, the way they even listen, um, the way they eat and what they eat. These are things that like I just picked up on naturally growing up and then going to college, same thing, you know, going from a, going to Wake Forest, that's, I, I don't know the demographic at this point, I can't even tell you, um, but we're definitely the only, <laughs> the black people were the athletes for, for, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> say about, people were the athletes, I'll just be 100% honest, but yeah. we're the athletes. Um, so, you know, um, just being around different people um, constantly is what, you know, how I developed those keen ears to actually hear the differences and hear, you know, certain things that, uh, you know, I can pick up on and, you know, help my career and, you know, also add value to their, their career by them hearing me as well. So, yeah, I hope that answered the question. I, I think I kind of got away from it just a little bit, but. Not at all, bro. <laughs> no, I'm tapped in. Like, yeah, perfect. We're good. I have like a hundred thoughts going. I'm just like, hold up. Hold it. Here we go. Um, I think, in all honesty, bro, like a lot of people are going to relate to you because your story is one of the things my mentor always says is there's only so many stories, Kay. Yeah. Right? There's only so many stories, you know, like the near death experience or the somebody that came from, um, you know, the hood or, you know, there's so many, there's only so many different variations of the same story. Facts, right. Right. And, and I think people, are having a hard time remembering that and tapping into that frequency and understanding that right. everything that's going on, nothing is new. It's a new, it's a variation of things that already happened. Sorry to cut you off. I was just saying, yeah, my mom, my mom always says nothing new under the sun. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, especially like, you know, with Eric Gardner and right. Sandra Bland, like that is not a new story. Story at all. At all. Yeah, man. It's, uh, Does that upset you, bro? Does that upset you that people think that's so new and they're so shocked? Uh, like, honestly, does that kind of upset you deep down? No, I would say that it upsets me. Um, I'm just happy that change is, is, is happening. Um, yeah. It's, it's actually tangible in a sense. So, if anything, I'm happy than, than being upset. Mm. Um, it, it's frustrating somewhat in the past where it's just like the acknowledgement wasn't there, the awareness wasn't there. Um, so becoming more aware and where people are forced to become more aware where it's like, you can't even avoid it anymore. Like if you're gonna open your phone, you're probably gonna see something um, at a certain, like, you know, at a certain time when things were really heated up, everyone in the world saw what was happening. Um, and, while the world was at a standstill, you're able to process it a lot differently. So I think that that's one of them be, you know, I haven't, I haven't really heard too, too much about that yet. Um, but maybe I'm just not listening. <laughs> Speaking of mm. listening. Um, but um, I, I think that, you know, being still for all the goers and doers out there, when they were actually still, they actually had to self-reflect and actually reflect on what was going on. And that is what created that, you know, radical change. I feel like in some people's hearts uh, where they were just like, you know what, this has been going on and this does need to change. This, this space right here, um, for the ones that, that have changed, um, you know, they had that radical change during that uh, uh, still moment um, where you're at home, maybe alone there with your family, but you're not going out to the movies, you're not partying, you're not, in the club, you're not at the restaurants, you're at your house. Man, it's been a minute since I've been in the club. <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? It's been a minute. And it's gonna be a minute before I ever do that again. But uh it's it's one of those things where, like I said, just it's it doesn't make me mad. It it it, it makes me happy that people are becoming more aware. Um and you know, the lack of awareness, I, you can't really be mad at, at people. Some people are really great people, you know. You know, a lot of people, and that's, I value people. Uh, I believe, you know, something I said earlier is I believe people are the number one currency. And if you're able to value people, um, they'll, they'll value you as well. So, you know, just 
being being valued um and you know taking you know what you learned during that still moment and and taking that ignorance and making it into something that now you're actually being uh cognitive of i should say then it's it's you know it's it's for the betterment and i'm happy for it yeah i feel that man i think a lot of a lot of people have that sentiment man it's like no nope, we're not going to be upset at people we're just glad you know what i mean and i and that that is a there's definitely two schools of thought right and both are i think both are correct in my honest opinion it's okay to yeah. be angry but it's also okay to not be angry facts i agree i mean i wouldn't say i agree 100 percent. the only way the only reason I, I think to be to be angry and to give that energy and to give them your energy that way um mm. is not as advantageous as to you know not ignore it but to use that in a positive manner and, and not like it's something that you know i've I've been beaten down. I've been oppressed. Like having that mindset is not good for anyone. Yeah, you, you feel like the victim mindset is just not going to help anybody is what you're saying. Mindset is not going to help you reach any type of goal that you have, um, no matter what it is. So get that mindset out of here. If, if you're asking me personally like that, I don't, mm. I don't ever being the victim um, is going to get you anywhere. Because if I, if I hadn't been the victim, I'll, be, I'll probably still, you know, be doing the same things I've done in the past. It's just, mm. what, what was me? You know, I'm from the hood. I can't really make it out. Like, I'll just be mm. sitting around listening to rap music or something. Like, like, just like, oh yeah, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm going to have mm. to, you know, like no white person giving me a job or, you know what I mean? Like have mentality and mindset is not good for anyone. You got to be able to rise above that, um, be optimistic about your your own um, life and take your own life mm. in, in, into, you know, uh, take control of your own life and your own destiny and make better decisions. I appreciate that honesty, bro, because a lot of people wouldn't be that honest. Just keeping yeah. it real. Yeah, I keep That's it real. Always. Keep it I, I definitely agree, like, to an extent, too, because I think as much as I want to be sympathetic and everything, it's, imagine, though, how, like, <sighs> imagine how Sandra Bland's family's feeling. Yeah. Right, like put yourself in their shoes for like five minutes. Like, is it really that bad for you right now to be right. angry and upset out loud and putting your energy and time there permanently? Right. Maybe not. Maybe like you said, and maybe it is better to put it towards change and positivity and inclusion mm -hmm. and things like that. Right. Um, yeah, that's a yeah, man. That's deep. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people struggle with being honest about where they're at with that. Oh yeah, I I agree. I agree. Um, yeah. you got to choose a side. It's it's not even necessarily. Let me take that back. It's not even a side. You gotta <laughs> do what's right. Just do what's right. It's that simple. It's not. It's a right or wrong. It's not no. There's no gray areas. It's black and white. You know, do what's right. That rhymes. It's black and white. Do what's right. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag. Do what's right. What's right. <laughs> Go, man. Well, hey. Um. I'd love for you to tell the people kind of what you're doing in your organization, where they can find you, uh, what's going on, what's the best way to connect with you, and then uh, say goodbye. All right, sweet, man. All right, again, my name is Josh Hunt. Um, obviously, it's on the bottom of the screen. Um, shout out again to Sync Lab Media, um, using the studio. Shout out to VentureX um, out here in Addison, Texas, where you can find me um, on Instagram at jhuntseta. Um, mm -hmm. And find me on at josh hunt um and you can also find the organization that i'm a co-founder of is eta bolt that is our instagram is eta bolt um and what we do at eta bolt again is we bridge the gap between culture and corporate and um, we work with certain organizations i would say certain we work with um, large organizations on uh their, their leadership teams on diversity and inclusion um whether it has cultural topics that are you know similar to like I said mental health. Uh, we we have a broad range of uh, experts that we have to speak on these um, topics, and we're able to increase engagement for companies as well through all the things that I just talked about, from being authentic to the different experiences. Um, and we also consult and 
do brand activation. So anyone who needs a brand yeah. activation, um, if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's it's basically experimental marketing. You take yep. the brand and we, 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 we take your core values and everything that you you, you do um, at your organization and we just basically, you know, a little sauce to it, for better lack of words. We, we sauce it <laughs> to relate to, to a larger demographic. Um, and we, we've been doing it for two years now. So, you know, I'm definitely a professional in that space. Um, and I look forward to, you know, this journey um, and continuing to help other people because at the end of the day, that's what it does. It's, it's helping people, um, you know, reach, reach, reach larger demographics and just reach new heights in life and find purpose as well. So, yeah, oh, appreciate you awesome, having me. Awesome, man. I really man, it's been a little fun, bro.